Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1984 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Seattle Mariners and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for Seattle today is Jeff Fisher, whose record is 0-1 with a 1260 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Burt Blylevin, whose record is 2-1 with a 375 ERA. Uh, so we were decimated yesterday by the Mariners, uh, I guess single-handedly so, when you think about it, because Alvin Davis had two home runs and seven RBI. He had a grand slam, a two-run home run, and an RBI from earlier in the ball game, And uh, we lost 11-6. to six. Uh, I tried to, um, when the game was out of hand, I tried to let our bullpen just wrap this game up, which is something they typically do without giving up... Um, you know, too too many runs or or having too much difficulty. But yesterday just did, did not go our way, and uh, we we got clobbered by uh, Seattle. So that's the way it goes. I mean, we're gonna <laughs> we uh, we're starting to see what our team is, and that is uh, maybe just a 500 team at best, which is not where you want to be. Um, we we are probably going to have to make some tough decisions pretty quickly, certainly before the end of the month, uh, before we fall too far behind uh, Boston and New York and Baltimore, technically. So these are all things we have to uh, think about. Um, but today is just about the ball game to wrap up the series versus the Mariners. Let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. We've only won one of the first three games in the series. That is not what you want. Uh, we do have Burt Bly 11 down the mound. Uh, I, I don't know. It says he, he hasn't faced the Mariners ever before, ever. Not even as an Indian or, you know, I mean, come on. Uh, so he gets to start today. Carl Willis will not be available. Neither will Roy Thomas. Uh, that's bad news right there. So we're down two righties. We got Gumpy Gumpert and uh, Dave Smith as our only two options. And then if we take a look here uh, at our lineup versus righties, uh, Gibby, uh, Gibby is listed as tired, so we're going to give uh, Kirk Gibson the day off today. And all that means is uh, Kevin Bass will go into left field. Okay, let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Seattle Mariners. Same as the first three games of the series, it appears. Batting leadoff. Playing second base is Harold Reynolds. Batting second at shortstop is Spike Owen. Batting third at first base is Alvin Davis. Batting cleanup. Playing left field is Ricardo Sainz. Batting fifth and catching is Tom Pagnazzi. Batting sixth at third base is Tom Dodd. Batting seventh in center field is Dave Henderson. Batting 8th and dh is Dick Schofield. And batting ninth is the right fielder, Ricky Nelson. Okay, let's take a look at Burt. Bly 11 is making his 6th start, 2-1, with a 3.75 ERA, 24 strikeouts and 36 innings pitched. He's got a good uh, walk-to-inning pitch ratio. Uh, his on, uh, opponent's batting average is 2.64. He's thrown a complete game shutout this year. Doesn't have much of a fastball. It tops out to 89 miles an hour. Uh, he is a fly ball pitcher 65% of the time. His best pitch is a sidearm curve. And he's got three other secondary pitches that are below league average. Overall, right at league average, which is an 80. The 33-year-old righty is a free agent in 1986. Taking a look at what he's done so far. Yet to face Seattle, like it says. Um, he's coming off a no decision versus the Brew Crew, where he went six innings, giving up two runs on six hits and three walks. All right. Here we go. Let's take a look at our defense today. Solid all the way around. We've got Kevin Bass in left field. That is his natural outfield position. That's his, the best of the three. Although we can put him anywhere, and he should do all right. We have anyway, and he has done well. We got Terry Kennedy behind the plate today as well. Okay, here we go. Harold Reynolds leading off versus Burt Wylevin. How many leadoff guys are going to get on today? 
Reynolds popping it up to second, where Whitaker makes the catch just on the infield dirt. One out. Next man up is Spike Owen. Owen betting 262. Three home runs and he lost. We've got a runner on first. One down. Here's Alvin Davis. This guy is scary to face. He's got eight home runs after the two yesterday. 27 RBI after the seven RBI from yesterday. And he does this a solid. Grounding into a double play. Trammell to Whitaker to Brock. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at our lineup rundown. Betting leadoff, playing second base today, is Sweet Lee Whitaker. Batting second at first base is Greg Brock. Batting third at third base is George Brett. Batting cleanup in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting fifth and DHing is Ken Smith. Batting sixth and catching is Terry Kennedy. Batting seventh in left field is Kevin Bass. Batting eighth at shortstop is Alan Trammell. And batting ninth is the center fielder Chet Lemon. Okay, let's take a look at Jeff Fisher here. Uh, there's not much to see. He's only making his second career start. Uh, he got the call up because uh, the regular starter in the, in the rotation, uh, Roy Branch, is injured. So this is his second career start. First one did not go well. He took a loss, giving up seven runs on 11 hits, three walks, a couple dongs in just five innings. So I have a feeling the game is going to have him Pitch really well against us to get that ERA down. His fastball tops out at 91 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 40%. He's a two-pitch pitcher. The fastball being his best one of the two. Rated an 83. Overall, a 74. He's only 20 years old and not arbitration eligible until 1986. Hell, they called him up from single A. He's pitched in single A ball his entire career. It actually has been okay down there, uh, other than his one start this year uh, at single A. Okay, well, not much we can learn from that. Taking a look at their defense, uh, left field is their weakness with Ricardo Sines. Uh, everywhere else, pretty solid. Okay, here we go. Sweet Lou leading off today instead of Gibby, as Gibson is getting a regularly scheduled day off. And Whitaker rips it into the bleachers for a home run. Wow. That is a quick start for Whitaker. His third home run on the year after blasting 26 last year. And also, he leads our team in RBI with 19. one nothing, just like that, Detroit. Here we go with Greg Brock. Brock Ness Monster with a base hit in the center field. Well, I like this. I like the way things are starting against Jeff Fisher. Doesn't appear that he's ready for prime time. We got a runner on first. Here's George Brett. Brett's average just under 300. Brown ball gets past the first baseman. Brock will go to third. Oh, do we want to send him home? How is that possible that the ball is right there? No. Oh, it's a double, though, for Brett. Weird. That's weird. His fourth double this season. Tenth extra base hit. And it's second and third. Nobody out for Big Willie. Glenn Wilson betting 316 versus righties. 264 overall with three home runs. And he strikes out swinging. One down. We're going to go on contact here with Ken Smith. I have a feeling we might not be getting another run. Oh, they're going to walk him. That's a good idea. That's an unintentional intentional walk. The bases are loaded now for Terry Kennedy. If that's it, an actual in-game strategy from the AI, I, I like that. It's pretty good. Bases loaded. Um... Everybody's going to be running on a ground ball, so we don't need to go on contact. We just have to try to avoid a double play, which seems inevitable. 2-1 count. That's a pop-up. Right in front of the pitcher.
Two down, base is loaded. Here is Kevin Bass. Bass batting 216. No home runs yet. He's not going to get one here. So this was a major wasted opportunity. We are only going to get one run on three hits. And I always feel like that changes the momentum in the game when you can't score with the bases loaded. We will find out as Ricardo Sainz will lead off. Sainz batting 281, six home runs on the year. Yep. So this is pretty much to be expected as he beats out a double. Bass, I don't know if he had his head down or what. Six double of the year for Sainz. Not a fast guy, but manages to get a double there. So we're going to give this run right back. The nozzle strikes out. First K for Y11. Here's Tom Dodd. He's only batting 204 overall. 185 versus the righties. Back-to-back Ks. Have Y11 on the verge of getting out of this. It is Dave Henderson, though. Henderson batting 255, three home runs. Uh, very on Dave Henderson like, yeah. So it's all tied at one. I mean, it was it was going to happen right from the beginning. And then Dickie Schofield hits a two-run home run, and this game is over. So we'll just play it out. Three to one, Seattle. Yeah, Fisher will not give up another run today. Uh, it's, the game is going to try to get his ERA down as much as it possibly can. Even just getting one inning <laughs> brought his ERA down. Yeah, we, we might get an occasional hit like Trammell's there, but we will not be scoring on Jeff Fisher again. Oh, I could be wrong. As Whitaker is going to hit it all the way to the center field wall. No, of course, the game won't let that happen. That is his uh, seventh double. Good job by Whitaker. And will they walk Brock? Yeah, they sure do. Oh, no, base hit to right. Well, I've just been completely wrong in this one. Score two of the RBI, two RBI single. And by Brock, it's all tied at three. And this might be a completely different outcome than I anticipated. Fisher walks Brett. One out for Wilson. Wilson flying out to right field. That'll be deep enough to get Brock to third. First and third, two down. Ken Smith up. Smith, I won't say he's been disappointing, but he's not driving in runs, and he's not getting the home runs. That's frustrating. Round ball to first. And the game is tied, going to the top of the third. We're back to Harold Reynolds. Reynolds strikes out swinging. Third K for Bly 11. Ground ball to short. Two quick ones for Burt. And then Alvin Davis. Alvin just chipmunked that ball right to short. We go to the bottom of the third. Three all. Terry Kennedy leading off against Jeff Fisher. Fisher has given up six hits and two walks, but only 47 pitches. Well, I guess it's through two innings, so that's a lot. That is a lot. Ground ball in the hole at second. One down as Reynolds makes the play. Here's Kevin Bass. Popped it up with the bases loaded. Weak ground ball to first. Alvin Davis doing it himself. Two down and Tremel. One for one today with a ground ball to short. Now. Going to the top of the fourth. Here's Ricardo Sainz leading off. Flips it out to right. One out. Tom Pagnazzi with the base hit to right. Everybody's going to right field because the game doesn't know any better. Full count to Dodd. He strikes out looking. 
Two down for Dave Henderson. We saw Henderson with the hit in the second. And a base at the left. Pagnazzi should be at third base with two down. Here's Dick Schofield. <laughs> Fifth home run of the ball of the season. A guy that has a 90 power. He had 53 career home runs. We looked it up. We had to look it up. It's so ridiculous. Base is loaded. Infield single. It's four to three. This game sucks so bad, man. It's so ridiculously horrible. Four to three. Burp Lyleven has given up four runs. And a pitcher making his second career start right now has the has the lead. Lemon flying out, Whitaker rounding out. Good Brock walking. George Brett flying. I mean, this game blows. We all know that. It just it doesn't make any sense. The ratings mean nothing. Pardon me. Go to the top of the fifth. Spike Owen getting jammed inside, popping it up. Only batter today that didn't go the opposite direction. Ground ball up the middle from Davis. Out number two. Ricardo signs. That might fall in for a hit. Yep. Seven hits now for the Mariners. The Nas. Another base hit to center. Yay, let's just keep going. Fifth strike out for Bly Levin. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Wilson over Ricardo Sainz's head. <laughs> do we want to go for three? We do not. Wilson, that is his seventh double of the year. I hope Wilson stays healthy all year. I don't think it makes any difference, to be honest. But not having him for a full season really does suck. How is that a strikeout? That was like way below... Second K for Fisher. That'll tie up the ball game. I can't get excited about anything that's happening. It just feels so forced. We go to the top of the six. See if we can't get one more out of Burton. He's pitched horrible today. One up. Here's Dickey. Ground ball to third. Brett. Oh, come on, man. This is just bullshit, man. I, it's unbelievable. He's got an 892 fielding percentage. He's made eight errors. He's made more errors this year in 26 games than he did last year in 66 games. I mean, he's actually completely inverted his defensive range and defensive war from last year. I mean, everybody has a bad year. Look, 1980, the year that he won the batting title, he made 28 errors. And his defensive war was five, negative 5.3. I mean, his defensive range and his defensive war was just almost one win share. Um, and then the year before that in 1970. Oh, this is, I'm sorry, this is when we started our sim. So, yeah, in 1979, before we started our sim, he made 30 errors, which is pretty horrific when you think about it. That's not our game doing that. That's, that's what he did in real life. Um, and yet he had still had a 21.3 defensive range. Uh, yeah, I mean, he got to everything. Three and a half... Basically three and a half uh, for his uh, his uh, range per nine. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the point of it is, is like, what changed? It doesn't matter. There's nothing we can do about it. Yep. So he's going to score from first because he's got super fast speed. What was that? Just a pitch? Six strikeouts. Here's Spike Owen. 0 for 2 today with a walk. And he strikes him out to get out of the inning. They're bringing in a new pitcher. Former closer, Manny Sarmiento. He <laughs> closed one year for them. He had 30 saves and a 2.58 ERA, and then they never used him again. He's been on the Mariners the entire sim time, and he's been pretty good up until last year, I guess. A little bit of a rough year. Um, he's got an 89-mile-an-hour fastball. Ground ball percentage is 50%. Both pitches below league average. Overall, 75. The 28-year-old righty goes to free agency in 1985. Two on count to Lemon. Ground ball to second. And we're just pushing buttons here, man. There's really nothing else to do. It's like the least interactive baseball game ever created. Top of the seventh inning. We cannot let Burt at 110 pitches pitch to Elvin Davis. I mean, another... Uh, how many... Like... I have, I'm actually, I'm, we're going to find out right now. Sorry, we're going to do this right now. So this is his sixth start, and he'll have only had decisions in three. Dave Rosma, he's had five starts, decisions in three. Brian Kelly, five starts, decisions in four. Jack Morris, four Six starts, decisions in four. And Dan Petrie, six starts, decisions in four. So what is that, like 60% of the time, there's a decision. You just can't keep them around long enough uh, for them to play a part in uh, the final score. We'll bring in Comstock to face Alvin Davis. And it's a good Comstock coming out. Gumpy Gumpert. He walks it. Yay. Three cheers for the worst ball game ever created. But button pushing, just pushing the buttons. I almost said mutton busting instead of button pushing. Mutton busting is when those little toddlers <laughs> ride around on sheep at the uh, rodeo, which is a lot more entertaining in this game. Surprised Brett didn't make an error at the plate. Ground ball to short. We're going to the eighth inning. I think we actually have to let him pitch to Dick Schofield. A tapper. Back to Gumpy. Now we'll bring in a lefty because we got a lefty, two switchies, and a lefty. So we'll bring in. Morris Madden instead of Rucker. Uh, worst case scenario is this game doesn't go to extra innings. That would be nice. Infield single. Awesome. Great job game. Makes total sense. Lefty on lefty. There's another hit. This is sweet. Good job. Makes total sense. This would all happen. And it's 5-4. to four. Now we got the righties, so we'll bring in Dave Smith to wrap this ball game up. If 
5 4. We bring in a new pitcher. It's Carlos Diaz. Oh, I don't care. I'll just let Kennedy bat. One out. Last one out is average a little 200. Walks, nobody cares. 11 strikes out, ninth inning. Pagnazzi goes deep, 6 to 4, off our closer. A double into the gap for Dodd. Dave Henderson strikes out. Dickey strikes out. Ricky strikes out. God, this game is so fucking stupid. A home run, a double, and then three straight strikeouts? I mean... You ever heard that theory, like if you have infinite monkeys and infinite typewriters and infinite time, eventually a monkey will type Shakespeare? That's what happened with this game. Some monkey just typed this up. Got lucky. Double play. All right. Another loss. We're at a 500. And it is time for us to start making some changes. Uh, I think we got to trade Jack Morris. We got to get rid of... Um, we got to get rid of uh, Lance Parrish. We're, we're not going to win this division. We're only four and a half games back. And that's only because the game forces us to stay close um but uh you know because we're the human controlled team but we're we're not going anywhere uh this year uh, which is a it's just it's i'm already kind of disappointed in this whole season um but uh, it is what it is so uh there's the uh american league standings national league philadelphia still ahead Lo los angeles two games up over cincinnati Let's take a look at the headline news, Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. The O oh, is a big trade. Well, a, uh, the A's and the Orioles. Oh, see, I told you the Orioles needed to start saving some payroll here. Holy cow. Wait, what? Wait. Thanks to a three-person. I'm looking at it, and I'm not saying anything. I can just read it to you. Thanks to a three-person deal worked out between the A's and the O's. Catcher Jim Leyritz and reliever Scott Bankhead go to Baltimore. Baltimore needs pitchers. That makes sense. In return, Oakland gets Robin Yount. Now, that's great, except for Oakland already has a shortstop. It's Cal Ripken Jr. So, once again, this game is stupid beyond all comprehension. Uh, the A's lead the West. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but, uh, I mean... Uh, on the other hand, it makes sense because Baltimore has no money. So they get rid of payroll and take on a couple schlubs. Let's take a look at transactions. And we'll look, take a deeper look at it. Here we go. So Robin Yount, oops, he goes to Oakland. He was off to a good start. It's kind of weird to think that Robin Yount can't find a team in this game. Of course, he started on Milwaukee. He played his whole life in Milwaukee in real life. Uh, and then he got traded to the Rangers, who gave him up. I don't know if it's free agency. He went to Cleveland, played half a year for Cleveland. Oh, that was the uh, strike-shortened year. So he must have been injured. And then he signed with uh, Baltimore. And uh, he's coming off his best year. And yet... He's now in Oakland A on a team where they already have a shortstop. In return, uh, the Orioles get Scott Bankhead, a 20-year-old, and he goes right to the majors, which makes sense because he's got an 80 rating. I mean, that's not horrible. Um, he's got to be a reliever. That endurance is not good. And they get Jim Leritz, a pretty good catcher. Won a bunch of rings, had a big hit, right? 
Okay, uh, yeah. So, like, let's look at um, what did Oakland do for that lineup? Kyle Ripken goes to the bench. Robin Yount goes right into that spot. So, that's the second trade this week for Oakland. They're really going for it. They traded for this Craig Cossack guy from Baltimore and then Robin Yount. That's not a bad team when you look at it that way. Um, okay. And then uh, what did Baltimore do to the shortstop? Oh, well, Bob Bonner, the guy that was competing with Cal Ripken Jr. in real life for that shortstop job, um, gets the job officially. Bob Bonner outlasts Cal Ripken. <laughs> wow, that's crazy to think about. But that's kind of, you know, that's that's what it was like in real life. I mean, Bob Bonner and Cal Ripken going after it. And uh, Ripken won out in real life, but not in this game. It's uh, Bob Bonner. And, yeah, this is, this is, uh, this team's kind of messed up now. What's their pitching? Bankhead, he gets the final spot. That sends uh, Jeff Rainier down, who was pitching pretty good for a guy with a 66 rating, but again, the ratings don't appear to actually mean anything in this game. All right, let's pull up the box score. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Um, and we'll give player of the game to Lou Whitaker. Moving him into the leadoff role did a good, was a good thing today. Got three hits, scored a couple of runs, drove in a run with the home run. George Brett, man. I don't know what the hell's wrong with this game. Burt Blylevin pitched bad. He did have seven strikeouts, but it was all fluff. Morris Madden gets the loss. Dave Smith gave up a run. Is that Morris Madden's first decision? Nope. He's one and two in the majors now. The win goes to Manny Sarmiento. Mark Littell gets his second save of the year. Home runs by the catcher Pagnazzi and Dick Schofeld. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, we're going to come back tomorrow, play another one. Until then, everyone have a great day.